A lot of people complain about the Raspberry Pi's micro SD storage being slow, unreliable, and just not enterprise grade enough. Well, maybe not that last one, but I'm about to show you how I took that complaint and aimed a bazooka at it by going straight to the other extreme. That's right, literal enterprise grade hardware raid on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. I wanted to see if I could get this LSI card working for resilient enterprise grade hardware raid for the first time on a Raspberry Pi. And when I said I went overkill, I mean overkill. I bought four 7200 RPM SATA hard drives. I bought stackable 3.5 inch hard drive cases. I bought a giant power supply. To give you an idea of just how crazy this is, the compute module and IO board weigh just 0.1 kilograms or 0.22 pounds, while all these other things weigh a whopping five kilograms or 10 pounds. And now my desk feels really cramped for space. So to anyone who complains again about the Raspberry Pi having lackluster storage options, point them at this video. Maybe they can also make fun of my attempt. Before I plug in the SAS card, I should tell you a little bit about SAS. And no, this isn't the British Special Air Service. It stands for Serial Attached SCSI. But like the British SAS, it is special. If it weren't, you'd just see servers with dozens of SATA ports on their motherboards and a jungle of SATA cables. Well, there are three main reasons servers often use SAS, though this list isn't exhaustive. First, these SAS storage cards have built-in hardware-controlled RAID and RAID-level caches. RAID is something I'll discuss in depth in another video, but these cards often have connections for external batteries for even better protection against data loss due to power failures. Second, these cards have special connectors, in this case, the internal mini SAS or SFF8087, which carries four SATA connections in one board connector. That leads to a lot less messy cabling when you're dealing with servers with four, 10, or maybe even 20 plus hard drives in one case. And third, these cards work directly with both SATA and SAS drives, meaning you can use more expensive, but also more durable and performant SAS hard drives that have faster rotational speeds and better longevity. With modern SSDs and flash-based storage, SAS is often less appealing from a performance perspective, but since many people need lots and lots of storage, old-fashioned rusty rotating disk platters are still more cost-effective, and they're a lot easier to deal with in bulk using SAS cards. Now that we know a little bit more about SAS, it's time to plug in the card. Except, just like with my 4 point gigabit network card, it just won't fit. And no, Redshirt Jeff is not going to cut into the board. I actually made him buy me a new Pi 4 after he cut mine in half last video. And yes, I told him you can't make a compute module by cutting the ports off a regular Pi 4, and now he finally believes me. So I tried plugging the card into the Pi via my 1x to 16x adapter. The card's CR3 LED lit up, but when I glanced at the dmessage logs on the Pi, it showed the PCI link was down. That usually means there was some problem. Thinking it may be a power problem, I tried plugging in the card through an external powered GPU riser. That didn't work either. Same problem. So I tried plugging it in through an external powered PCI Express switch, and that didn't work either. So then I tried the other copy of the card I got. I should mention here that both of these cards were server pulls, meaning they were yanked out of decommissioned old Dell servers, and they were given to me with a batch of other cards by Jacob Hiltz. So thank you so much to Jacob. I'll be testing some other cards that he sent in future videos. Anyways, the other card did almost the exact same thing, except at one point, all the LEDs on the front lit up for a bit. After a while, it settled down and just the CR3 and CR4 LEDs were lit, but on the Pi, no matter how I powered the card, it always resulted in Link is Down. Now I should mention, I was really excited about getting these cards working. I was even considering powering up 16 hard drives and making a monster NAS with both LSI cards. And I had already run to Micro Center and bought four drives just to test it out. There's a saying, don't count your eggs before they're hatched. And I think I'm gonna start a new one, and that is don't buy your hard drives before you're sassed. Alas, I couldn't get the cards to work at all, and though I'm not writing the cards off totally yet, I'm not hopeful I'll be able to get them to work with the Pi. If you want to see all the details of my SAS journey and follow any future progress I might make, please follow the GitHub issue linked in the description. It even has a pretty picture of the card. But wait, I see you thinking, this video still has some time left. What else could there be to cover if the SAS cards didn't work? Well, here's the thing. I had these four giant hard drives, and I think I was a little inspired by Fezzig from Princess Bride. And then there were four white horses. 
And I thought, there are four of us. If we ever find a lady. Hello, lady. I thought, I saw Micro Center shelves, and there they were, four refurbished hard drives. And I thought, there are four ports on the IOCrest SATA card that I'm testing, if it ever works. Hello, card. So I plugged them in. And what do you know? After recompiling the kernel the 14th time in as many days, I got the card to recognize all four drives, and I was off to the races. As with everything I'm testing, there's a GitHub issue in the Pi PCI Express Card database website that details everything I tested with the SATA card, and it's linked in the description, so go check it out. Anyways, I found I had some problems when I went to hook everything together. The first issue was cables. For the SAS card, I had some mini SAS breakout cables that would have been fine for all four drives, but I only had two SATA cables and I needed two more. So I hopped on Amazon and bought a three pack. It's always nice to have a spare. But then I was trying to figure out the best way to power the four drives. If I were dealing with a server or a large PC case, I might have a large power supply at my disposal. But all I had was a measly four pin Molex power connector and two amps. I should probably put that on a shirt as my slogan. Anyways, that's not gonna power four spinning hard drives well, so I finally decided to go back to Micro Center and buy a real power supply. Finally, I didn't wanna stack the drives directly on top of each other. If I bumped one of them, they could fall over or something on the controller board could short out, and any kind of sudden movements are risky for old spinning disk hard drives. So I also ordered four stackable drive carriers from Amazon. Now, it was about this point in the project where I realized I may be going a bit too far. I put everything on my desk to start assembling it, and that's when it struck me that yes, to all of you who are already starting to write your comment out, it might be more reasonable to buy a big old PC case, get a big old PC motherboard and a big old PC x86 processor and connect things together the old fashioned way, but that's been done before. Linus Tech Tips probably already has a hundred different videos showing how to set up boring old RAID arrays inside a boring old PC chassis. I'm gonna do this inside out. So I got to work. I made a little room on the table to unpack the stackable drive carriers. Then I started cramming the drives into the carriers. These stackable cases are actually a bit nicer than I expected with rubber grommets and special mounting screws to isolate the drives from the case and keep them nice and quiet. And by the way, all the things I'm using in this video are linked in the description in case you want to do something as crazy as I am and build a giant pie nest like this one. Anyways, after I got all four drives mounted in the carriers and made a nice mess of my clean white surface, I got to work plugging all the SATA cables into the drives. And I noticed that the 90 degree bends on the two red cables were opposite the bends on the black cables, so I decided to use the straight end to plug into the drives. With that sorted out, I plugged everything into the SATA card and realized why most people installing tons of hard drives in a case might like using a SAS card instead. The mess of individual SATA cables that don't quite bend in the way that you want gets really annoying. So now that I had all the data cables in place, it was time to figure out power. I grabbed the giant PSU and realized it only had three SATA power connectors on its included SATA breakout cable. Luckily, I had an adapter cable that split one power connection into four, so I was able to plug in all four drives. The power cabling ended up looking a little nicer than the SATA cables since I could just plug in one cable with multiple connectors, and since the wires are able to flex a little easier. The last thing I should mention is that with a PSU, you can't turn the thing on with just the switch on the PSU. It requires a functional motherboard with a power switch. For people sticking the PSU in a PC, that's no problem. But for me, I had to rig up a jumper wire between a common connection and the PS on connection in the motherboard power connector. I might build myself a nicer jumper or switch for this purpose in the future, but for now, my little jumper wire here works just fine. All right, now that I have a much more professional looking rig, I booted the Pi with my custom kernel. I cross compiled the Pi kernel and made sure to enable AHCI SATA support and Marvel SATA support using menu config. For now at least, the SATA drivers to support cards like the IOCrest one I'm using aren't built into the Linux kernel the Pi ships with. I also checked out Ubuntu for Raspberry Pi and the drivers aren't there by default either. So for now, you have to recompile the kernel to get a SATA card working. With the new kernel in place, I could use lsblk to see all the block devices including SDA, SDB, SDC, and SDD. All four hard drives right where they should be.
And what was next? Well, I hate to do this, but you're going to have to wait for the next video to see how I used MDAdmin to create different RAID arrays, benchmark them, and set up a RAID NAS using these four SATA drives. Subscribe, and until then, I'm Jeff Geerling. There's a GitHub issue in the P... in the P... in the P... Ugh. Compute Module 4. And I'm not holding the card that I'm supposed to show you, so let me go get that. After recompiling the current... The, mm. After recompiling the kernel 14th time, what? Somebody's walking above me again. Oh, now one of my kids is screaming. The last thing I should mention is that with a PCU, a PCU, and set up a RAID NAS using these four SATA cards. Four SATA cards?